What up, YouTube? It's your main man, Boys for Life, coming at you with another fucking video. All right, so this is gonna be my last video on this whole Dez bullshit thing. Now I made, I made a couple over the past couple days. I just, I'm just like, nah, I'm not gonna post those. Let me redo it. Um, but okay. A lot of you fucking cowboy fans think Dez is overrated. That, you know, you don't want Dez, you don't want this, Dez needs to go. You were the same motherfuckers that threw out Romo. <clears throat> well, not threw out Romo, but wanted Romo out. Y'all do realize that without Romo, we would, I mean, you you get mad because we went 8-8. Eight and eight. We really didn't do anything. And, or we'd go 9-7 and seven or whatever it was. You do realize that the one season we didn't have Romo, we went 4-12. We went 8-8 eight eight because Romo got us to 8-8 eight eight with his play extensions, pulling plays out of his ass, throwing touchdown passes. He's the reason why we were 8-8. Eight eight. Without him, we would have been 4-12 a lot of the years, or 3-13, or 6-10, or 5-11, or 7-9. Like, y'all do realize that, right? Like, you want to get mad that a guy who had virtually no run game his whole career, who had no offensive line most of his career, who had Jason Witten and T.O. for some time, and then they had Des Bryant and, T and, and Jason Witten. And we had no fucking defense any point in time Romo was there. None. Like our best defensive year was when we went when, when we went 13 and 3 with Romo. And we would have beat the Giants if Creighton catches that fucking slant. But no, it's Romo's fault. Just like Dak can't throw the ball, but yet it's Dez's fault that he's dropping balls. That he can't catch. That his production is down. I get it that I see the stats and I see that. Dak is the most accurate passer in his first two years in NFL history. <laughs> but that's like saying Russell Westbrook is the most amazing rebounder or, or his triple doubles are actually legit triple doubles. They're not. Russell Wilson patents his stats by getting... The, the, defender, the, the team lets him get the rebounds. Just like with Dak Prescott, when you check down 75% of the time and you complete 70% of those, you, you're going to be accurate. You're going to be accurate by the numbers. I mean, I don't know if you've watched film on Dak. The fool can't. The guy, look, I'm not hating on Dak. I'm not doing that at all. Not. Look, he's the quarterback of my fucking football team, so I'm a ride or die with it with, with Dak because he's our guy. But now that Dez is gone, we have no excuse if Dak fucks up. Because I guarantee you, you're gonna realize that oh, it wasn't Dez, it was Dak. Dak just can't throw. We need a new quarterback, one who can actually throw. Like I watched a video on on Facebook the other day. Um, of a YouTuber who broke down the Cowboys, uh, who broke down uh, Dak's play. And he compared, you know, he did a comparison from him and Deshaun Watson. And <laughs> it's completely different. Like, Dak Prescott is one of those guys that needs to see you to be open. If you ain't open, he's checked down, checked down. He's not a quarterback that's going to throw you open like most quarterbacks will do in the NFL. And he, I've seen the videos where he's missed two or three times Jason Wynn or Des Bryant wide open. Why? Because he's not looking at the field. He's looking at only a half instead of being, you know, Elite, you know, like a normal quarterback and looking at the whole field, or a good quarterback, I'd say, looking at the whole field, he looks at the half of where he needs to go. He, first of all, he telegraphs his throws. So the defenders know where the ball's going. Two, 
he takes a lot to get his feet ready to throw the ball. Three, his windup is ridiculously long. And four, I've seen his face where he's chunking the ball downfield and it hops and skips. Like, come on. I mean, we've seen it where he's thrown the ball downfield, i.e. The, the Vikings game his rookie year to Dez. That was like, that was uh, that was at least about a 60-yard throw. But I've seen it also where he's like put an ump behind the ball and the ball skips into the ground. So, look, like I said, I'm a ride or die with, with the Cowboys. If they want to go with Dak, hey, you know what? They want to go with Dak. Let's just hope he's not a Quincy Carter, um, you know, type of player. Like, as far as... We see all his potential here. He looks like he can be the face of our franchise, you know, for as a quarterback step from a quarterback standpoint, and then he just tanks. Um, Cause Romo, like legit, probably could have had one or two more years. And honestly, if Romo didn't get hurt in 2016, we um, we would have gone to the Super Bowl, and that's a guaranteed. Um, so. Um, sorry, I'm getting uh, messages from my chick. Um, but yeah, so again, and here's another reason why Dax, uh, and here's another reason why Dez's numbers are, are down. Tony Romo got hurt in 2014. That was when Dak had, uh, I mean, he didn't get hurt. He, that was his last full year, 2014. And that's when D they went to, to Green Bay Dez caught it, and that's when Dak Dez had a had a good year that year. <clears throat> that's why he got the contract that he did. Then let's look at the the facts here, people. Y'all want to throw out Dez and say he's garbage over radio? Let's look at the facts. Um, 2014, they went 12 and four. Dez and Demarco Murray, Murray had a fucking bust out year. Um, <clears throat> the following year, what happened? Oh, Dez and Romo kind of got hurt. Well, Romo got hurt. Dez kind of was here and there. So, yeah, production's down. Okay, let's give it another year. Oh, Romo's back, but he gets hurt. So, let's insert Dak and Elliott. So, let's hand the ball off to Elliott a bunch of times. And then let's get Dak to check down and throw. Why do you think Cole Beasley had a bomb-ass year that year? Because Dak was checking down to him a lot. Him and Winton. Like, come on. <clears throat> like, y'all don't see this? <clears throat> and then we all know what happened last year. You want to blame Dez for a lot of shit. Even though Dak, sorry, Dak wasn't throwing the ball downfield and getting it to his to Dez. And if he did, excuse me, Dez had to fight through a lot of, receipt, uh, a lot of corners to come back because the ball was thrown so short. <clears throat> so, it just amazes me how fans turn on teams or players quick, as quickly as they do if they're not producing, instead of looking at the big picture and why aren't they producing. It's not because Dez is washed up. It's not because Dez is overrated. It's because, <clears throat> it's because Dak Prescott doesn't fit Dez Bryant's style of play. Because if you get the ball in the vicinity of Dez where only Dez can catch it up here like the way Romo used to do, it's game over all day. But Dak can't do that. Dak can't do that, and I saw that his rookie year. Every once in a while, he would hit him on the back shoulder where he needs to, but more, off time, more times than not, it wouldn't happen. But you know what? It's Dez's fault, like all y'all dumbass Cowboy fans want to believe. And I know a lot of y'all are going to come on here and say that I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about. And, and I'm a homer and I'm all about Dez. No, no. I want good players on our team. You want to say he's a distraction? No, he's not a distraction. He's one of those guys that hypes you up that, you know what? Like, I'm hyping, I'm hyping my guys up. I want to go play. I want to go play. Like, I'm getting hyped up by my boy. I'm going to go play and show up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do my business. Let's go. And then, yeah, I can see why when he gets the ball and he makes plays, give me the ball, give me the ball. Get a fucking quarterback who can get him the ball when he needs to. 
because there are times when Dak does get him the ball right when it needs to be there, and Dez makes plays. And there's other times where Dez has to alter what he's doing to get the ball, and it's not big plays. It's a catch, boom, let's go out of bounds because I'm on the sideline. There's a lot of times in film where I saw Dez, I mean Dak, um, lead Dez into uh, traffic and leave him open for fucking hits. I'm just saying, look, I'm not creating any waves here. I just look at the big picture. It wasn't Dez's fault. Yes, Dez did drop some balls. I'm, I'm not arguing that. I'm not saying, <clears throat> oh, da you know, Dak is, I mean, Dez doesn't drop anything. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is that more often times than not, Dak isn't getting the ball where Dez needs it. Yes, we see the ones that hit him in the hands right here. We see the ones right here in the face or whatever. But those look like those happen a lot of times because the media just plays it over and over and over and over. If you look throughout the course of the game, they're not showing you the 20 the 20 uh, yard pass over the head. They're not showing you the ball skipped in the ground where Dez is at. They're not showing the one that that you know it's he leads Dez out of bounds or he leads Jason Wynn out of bounds because the ball is so uh, inaccurately thrown. They're not showing you that. All you're seeing is the ones that hit Dez in the hands and they get dropped. All you're seeing is the ones that, you know, boom, they go right through his hand interception. That's all you're seeing. So, it's ridiculous. It's just crazy to me that, that y'all don't look at the... You, you're so blinded by Dak going 13-3 and his rookie year. Do you not realize that that was the peak of our offensive line? Do you not realize that we had a rookie running back that rushed for, what was it, like 1,800 yards or 1,600 yards? Uh, a sophomore uh, running back that missed six games and still almost got 1,000 yards rushing? Like, do you realize that? Like, and then you had... <laughs> I mean, and we had virtually no defense. Like, the reason why Marinelli can do so much with a shitty defense is because we control the clock. We control the clock. And I guarantee you this year, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get that offensive line back. We're going to control the clock. We're not going to see Dak's mistakes again. He'll probably be like his rookie year because we're going to be running the ball a lot. And our defense is not going to be blindsided or have to work a lot. They're not going to be a shutdown defense like we would need them to be, like uh, Baltimore or uh, uh, the Steelers. You know, you know, like the Steelers used to be. Uh, you know, shit like that, or like Jacksonville this past year. It's not going to be like that. We don't have a defense like that. So this year it's going to be a lot more run. Yes, we're probably going to go get a, a receiver in the draft. Sutton is the one that I want to go after now that we are going to have to go after a receiver now that I'm looking. Um, but I still think we should go with defense in the first round. Uh, a linebacker, I really think that we have our offensive pieces. I think we can get away with running the ball and having Hearns being our one with our offensive line if it's healthy being a badass again. I really do think so. Um, um, and so we need to anchor our defense with a linebacker. We really do. I really think we still need to go linebacker. So that's all I got to say. I'm out of here. Peace.